cool. Hey folks, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and this here is the Obsidian 3D Printer by Kodama. Or rather, I should say, it's a prototype unit of what will become the Obsidian Printer. I just had this thing dropped off the other night so that I could give you guys a little pre-review of this printer before it even goes live on Kickstarter. The reason I agreed to do this pre-review is because I think the Obsidian Printer has the potential to really be a game changer in the 3D printing industry. For backers on Kickstarter, this printer will start at $99 for the most basic kit, up to $250 for the deluxe kit. What I have here is the prototype of what will become that kind of middle tier version, which will be $150 on Kickstarter, and then the price will bump up a little more when this becomes a real commercial product. Still, this is going to be a ridiculously cheap printer, and the idea is that they really want to disrupt the market, make 3D printing more accessible to more people, make it accessible to schools, third world countries, or people who just couldn't afford 3D printers before. I was told that the baseline goal of this printer is to rival the quality of the Ultimaker 2 Go, which currently costs 10 times more than what this printer will cost. So if they're able to do that, it's really going to be amazing. And uh, well, that's why I'm trying it out today. So far, I haven't completed any prints on this machine, so I'm really eager to see what it can do. I do have this little print that I started, it got about 9% done before I got tired last night and had to pull the plug. But, interestingly enough, that doesn't mean this is a failed print. Check this out. The Obsidian printer is actually able to resume a print after a power failure, which is pretty crazy. It's something you don't see in most printers, regardless of price. I should mention that this feature is limited to the Obsidian Plus and the Deluxe versions, the $99 basic version of this Obsidian printer is going to lack some of the conveniences of the Obsidian Plus that I have here. It's not going to have the LCD screen or the injection molded housing, and you have to use a USB cable to print rather than using the cable or an SD card like this version. That said, even the basic version will have a heated bed so you could print all kinds of materials, and the print quality itself should be just as good, which as you can see here is in fact very clean and good especially for this price. I also really like that the build plate is magnetically attached so it's easy to remove and pop off your prints with a slight flex. I've also been told that the user interface on this LCD here is subject to change, but honestly, it's already pretty darn easy and intuitive compared to most printers, so I have no complaints there. My second print is going to be that little benchy model that I use for all my reviews because of course we want a benchmark to compare it to all the other printers I've tried out. So here it is printing out in that same Polymaker teal PLA material which I just love. What a great color. Once again the print pops off super easily and well just take a look at this benchy it pretty much speaks for itself. It's super smooth, it came out solid, the overhangs were handled quite well. It's a really great print and it rivals the quality of other printers that cost 5, 10 times as much money. After that, I wanted to try out a functional print. So I printed out this screw, which is actually the radiator plug for my BMW. This is a part that broke on my car and it would have cost me at least $20 on eBay and a lot of waiting, but instead I was able to really quickly design and print this thing within a couple hours and it's been working just great. With things looking good, I decided to try something a bit more challenging. This scaled up version of the King from my VR sculpted chest set. Some of those intense overhangs do get a little bit hairy, but overall it's another really great print. So I threw the ultimate challenge at this printer. This hypercube that I designed, which has some ridiculous overhangs that FDM printers probably shouldn't even be able to do. And yet the Obsidian did complete the print. This one wasn't perfect, there was a bit of under extrusion, but that might just have to do with the settings I used, and like I said, I'm honestly just surprised that it managed to print the whole thing. Finally, I decided to print one more vase just to test the build height of this printer, and I didn't have much time, so vase mode is the way to go when you want to go big and quick. 
This vase shows you the maximum height the obsidian can print within its 120 by 120 by 120 millimeter build volume. It's definitely not the largest print volume, but it's decent and nothing stopping you from sticking multiple parts together to make larger models. Here are all the parts that I printed on the obsidian, with the exception of course of that screw that is actually holding my car together. And the fact that these could all potentially come from a $99 printer is pretty mind boggling. Well guys, I only had two short days to play around with this machine, but I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with the results, especially considering the price that this printer is going to be and the ease of use. It was, it was really a good plug and play printer. The Obsidian printed a beautiful Benchy, one of the best I've seen, and it even was able to print out some more complex parts like this chest piece, and it's actually finished this torturous hypercube. So I'm definitely a fan of this printer, but it's important to bear in mind that this is a prototype. There are going to be other revisions that should hopefully improve the printer, but there's also complications that come up when you're mass producing a product versus creating a single prototype like this. So we've yet to see what the result is gonna be. That said, Kodama already did have success with their previous Kickstarter, the Trinus printer, which they fulfilled and delivered so they have a better reputation than your average small Kickstarter 3D printing company. So if you are interested in backing them, go ahead and check out the link in the description and you can find more information on their Kickstarter page. I really wish Kodama all the best because printers like this are the direction that 3D printing needs to go in. Lower cost, ease of use, but still good quality. I'm hoping that early next year I'll be playing with a production version of this printer and loving it, but that's it for now, so until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.